In the book of John chapter 14 verse 29, Jesus said, And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, Paul said, This know also, that in the last days perilous time shall come. In the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 12, Jesus said, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 25 and 26, we read, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13, the word of the Lord says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Friends, look at what is going on all around the world right now. We are indeed living in the last days. There was no room on the road which wraps itself around the port of Durban. It had been turned into a thoroughfare for raiders and thieves as they ransacked warehouses and distribution centers located close to the shipping terminal. The young and the old took advantage with people on foot joined by those in pickup trucks who'd come to steal in bulk. And the police and the country's military, well, they were nowhere to be seen. Why, why are people doing this? Why are people doing it? The train tracks were used as a form of escape by those lugging stolen goods, although many tried to avoid our camera. I'm hungry, we are hungry. You're hungry? Yeah, not long. It was a sentiment expressed by many. Why are people looting? No food, no nothing, no work, he said. But you can't eat a bicycle. I can, he responded. The trouble was triggered by the arrest of the former president, Jacob Zuma, last week. But it has been fueled by frustration in a country where millions are struggling in the midst of the pandemic. The authorities have made nearly 2,000 arrests nationwide, but they are not in control. On the River Horse Industrial Estate, a police unit fired tear gas and rubber bullets in an attempt to clear the park. The police are outnumbered and bewildered, and some are growing angry. As they race to another call, we saw one officer firing his weapon at people on the roadside at point-blank range. Nunca pensé ver a, venir a ver mi hija en este lugar aquí, a donde está. Ahorita en la mañana la enterramos. No era merecido que mi hija estuviera en este lugar, a donde estamos, a donde, a donde estoy yo y donde está descansando mi hija. Mi corazón, como que me haya pegado una puñalada, mejor que me hubiera matado a mí, lo que me mataron la niña. In Honduras, gang violence, poverty, and corruption is fueling a bloody war against women. A esta hora la pueden estar matando a otro. Les cortan los brazos, los las va y les quitan como que fuera yuca, pues. This past year alone, a woman has been murdered every 36 hours, making Honduras the femicide epicenter of Latin America. Como investigadora de muerte de mujeres, yo me quedé como que qué está pasando con estos hombres. Me toca hacer la de forense, irlos a, a arreglar a los chicos, a jalarnos, subir todo esto, bajar esos cerros caminando. Es que aquí las damas, las mujeres mueren como, 
como cualquier cosa. Pero... Me duele lo que me han hecho con mi hija. Katie is burning. For weeks, thousands of angry protesters have been marching through the streets of the capital, Port-au-Prince, demanding that President Jovenel Moïse step down. Democracy! Pour l'État, moi, pas besoin. Démocratie, kidnapping, non, pas besoin. Démocratie, on vérité, faut venir jouer à Haïti. The president's term officially ended on February 7th, but Moïse wants to govern for another 12 months because he took office a year after he was voted in. Now, these protesters are demanding new elections. Opponents say the president is stalling so he can grab more power. But he has the backing of the U.S. and Haiti's police force. The nation of South Africa appears to be in significant trouble tonight. Anarchy across the country in the cities and outside the cities. For more what's happening right now, we go to Kenita Hunter. She is a political editor at News 24 in South Africa. She joins us from Johannesburg. Kenita, thanks so much for joining us tonight. So we're experiencing this mostly on social media. People are seeing videos of what's happening uh, in your country. Describe what's going on right now, if you would. Well, there has been three days of uh, unrelenting looting and violence in areas around Johannesburg, as well as Durban and surrounding areas, which you see uh, started as protest uh, against the jailing of former president Jacob Zuma. This was on Wednesday last week. Um, by Thursday, there were sporadic incidences of violence. But over the weekend, this intensified to what President Cyril Ramaphosa has now called a coordinated criminality dozens of malls, shopping centers, um, and now even warehouses and factories have been completely looted by thousands um, of people uh, uh, ac across the country um, in these, uh, around uh, these two major economic hubs. What you see is the police completely overburdened, unable to stop these um, violent and looting uh, scenes that unfolded um, in the country, with the president having to call in the South African National Defense Force on Monday to reinforce efforts by police. There's been 1,200 people that have been arrested, but 72 people have lost their lives so far. Many Cubans say that they've had enough of government policies and have taken to the streets demanding the president step down. They're also calling for more freedom and are using slogans against the ruling Communist Party. Dozens of people have been arrested in a crackdown on security forces. Activists are using social media to gather support, but there are now restrictions for internet access. President Miguel Diaz-Canel, who succeeded Raul Castro this year, called on his supporters to defend the country. He's blamed the turmoil on decades-long US sanctions, which have dried up cash resources. Let's bring in Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who is the son of uh, Cuban immigrants, and he joins us right now from our nation's capital. Good morning to you, Senator. Good, Good morning. morning, guys. When you look at what is going on in Cuba right now, and it sounds like there were up to 5,000 people on the streets of Havana on Sunday. Why did the government allow that to happen? Because we've never seen this in, in decades, something this big. Yeah, it happened in over 40-something cities. It's actually, it's never happened, ever. We've never had over 40-something cities and protests that have continued through Tuesday and 
and, and Monday, and we just, you know, they shut off the internet, so we, we don't know how many people are out there. By the way, we don't know how many people have died. We don't know how many people have been seriously injured. We don't know how many people have been arrested. We know, you know, reports of hundreds of people that have vanished. But let me say, the government didn't allow it. On the contrary, they were surprised by it, and then they sent out repressive forces. Look, what's happening there is horrifying, okay? It's hard for people to believe it, because it's the kind of stuff you read about happened 100 years ago, but not now. So they'll go into people's homes and say, where's your 15 or 16-year-old son? Because we're, he needs to join this armed mob that's taking to the streets to beat people up. That's what they're doing. They're literally barging into people's homes. I have posted videos on Twitter. Yesterday, uh, this independent journalist was doing an interview with a TV station from Spain, and as she's on the air, state security comes in and arrests her. Another young man knows they're coming for him, goes and starts recording a video, and as he's recording a video calling on the protesters to keep going, you see, literally see the door behind him kicked open, and state security officials barge in. We don't know where he is today. So the government didn't allow it, and why it's happening? Because communism doesn't work, because Marxism sucks. That's why it's happening. Because yeah. people are out there saying, we don't want to live under this oppressive regime. We can't own a business. We can't feed our families. We can't go out and find a job on our own. We depend on the government for everything, and they give us nothing. They build fancy hotels for tourists, but they can't fix crumbling homes. They blame everything on America. We don't believe it anymore. And we're tired of living in a place where the only place in the world where Cubans can't succeed is Cuba. It's the only place in the world where Cubans can't Such succeed. America is becoming a nation of lawlessness. In Chicago, just the past weekend, 40 people were shot. 11 of them died. And in 37 cities across the U.S., the murder rate is surging. So how did the Democrats demand to defund the police escalate the crisis? And what is our president going to do about it? CBN White House correspondent Eric Phillips says more. According to an ABC Washington Post poll recently released, just 38% of adults approve of how the president is handling crime in this country. It's a perception the administration is keenly aware of and a major reason why the president called together police chiefs, mayors, and other stakeholders for a meeting at the White House. Bullets have been flying with people dying at an increased rate across the country, starting in April of last year to this very moment, and it's ranged in scope. Sadly, just last month, 16-year-old standout high school student Cassius Khan Glay was shot to death in Northwest D.C. Two months before, multiple people killed when a gunman opened fire at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado. The list goes on. The president says his strategy has multiple prongs. Our strategy provides uh, including funding for law enforcement through the American Rescue Plan for states, cities, and to be able to hire police and pay them overtime in order to advance community policing. The people of Cuba are demanding change from their government over shortages of food and medicine made even worse by COVID-19. It's the largest anti-government protest in the history of the communist regime. Demands for freedom echoing across the island nation. Thousands taking to the streets in massive anti-government protests, the likes of which have not been seen in more than 60 years. Mostly peaceful, there were clashes with police and Cuban special forces. Police upping their presence to keep streets clear. Dr. Teo Baboon, a Cuban-American entrepreneur and philanthropist, tells CBN News he's not surprised. Dissent has been brewing in the church for months. The evangelical community and the Catholic community begin to see a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, publishing taking place in social media uh, demanding that uh, the government uh, pay attention to the tremendous amount of hurt that was taking place. In a show of solidarity, about 5,000 flooded Miami streets near Little Havana. And in a statement, President Biden expressed support too. The United States stands firmly with the people of Cuba as they assert their universal rights. Dr. Baboon says now is the time for the Biden administration to take action. They should start a dialogue with the Cuban government to stop them, to have them stop, or else further sanctions should be uh, should be introduced against the Cuban government. Senator Marco Rubio, who's of Cuban descent, wants the regime held accountable for decades of repression. We have to make sure that their message today and every day moving forward isn't lost. 
and that the true nature of this barbaric regime is exposed. And in an address to the nation, Cuba's president blamed U.S. policies and sanctions for the current crisis and said a social media campaign was fueling the protests. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News.